Now we're going to focus on secondary shapes. This is what we're going to end up with. We're going to block in the indentation on the front of the building, garage door, windows, AC units, doors, awning, and our main focus here is to establish correct size, correct scale, and the placement of these elements. Let's go ahead and get started. Here is where we left off, just the primary shapes. And we're going to get started with the back by defining a bit more of the balcony. So I'm going to duplicate the mannequin and move it up to the balcony floor. Let's select the brush. Shift 5 for geometry editing mode. Mark is select the vertices and raise them up. And I'm establishing the height where the floor is going to be and how high the border wall needs to be. And I think 90 units or halfway up to the waist height is good enough. Then I'm going to take the same brush, duplicate it, move it up, and then in the details panel, change the brush type from additive to subtractive. Now let's modify the vertices by moving them in. So it only subtracts the inside and creates the inner space of the balcony. Let's move the vertices on each side 20 units in because the best thickness of the walls is 20 units. We need to do this for front view and in top view. And here we have our carved out space for the balcony. I'm going to duplicate the same brush, the subtractive brush, and then move it over into that gap for the balcony entry. Let's modify the brush so it subtracts that space we need. I'm going to reposition the vertices and move it into place. It'll be 20 units thick to create the entry. Here we are. This looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and jump inside the map and uh, run around and take a look. I like the height and it feels right. Now let's focus on the front, on this section right here, the indentation and the garage door. Going to select already existing brush, our additive brush, duplicate it, and again go into details panel and change the brush type to subtractive. Go to geometry editing mode and begin resizing this brush by selecting the vertices and moving them. I have an idea of the size that I want the indentation to be and it's about 120 units. But again I need to check in the perspective viewport and take a look. I'm going to move the mannequin a little closer so I can gauge and judge the scale and proportion a lot better. So there are two parts to this section. We have the wall that is angled and then we have a straight wall where the door is going to go. So we need to figure out in two parts the angle itself and how wide the straight door section is going to be. So I'm actually going to take this brush and resize it and focus on the angle first. I think the straight section is going to be probably 130 units in width because average door width in Unreal is 120 units and that will give me 5 units on each side to create the door frame. So I'm going to resize this brush, create the angle, and make sure I'll leave 130 units for where the door is going to go, the straight section. Once I have the angled wall blocked in, I'm going to duplicate the subtractive brush, resize it, and block in the straight section for the door entry. I also want to take into consideration the 20 units for wall thickness that's going to be on the side next to the door. This part right here. Let's go ahead and move the mannequin a little closer. And I think the height of this indented section is too big. It's too tall. So let's resize it down. I'm going to grab both brushes, go into front view or side view, and move them down. So I'm going to grab the top vertices of both brushes and move them down. I want the height of this indented section to be about 270 units. And that, that looks right. That feels right. Let's go ahead and jump in game and take a look. Now, I don't want you to think that you have to follow exact dimensions that I'm using. I'm just telling you what I'm using and the dimensions that I'm getting. This is based on what I'm seeing inside the editor, what feels right for the scene. And your exact dimensions 
may be different. So always compare to the mannequin that you have in the scene and always play test and game from the player's point of view. Also remember, this is just a block and process and we can always modify the dimensions and the size when we begin modeling. So let's go ahead and move on and focus on the garage section. This part right here. I'm going to take the additive brush right where that garage door is going to go, duplicate it, and then change brush type to subtractive. Now let's go to top view, geometry editing mode, and resize the vertices and pull them in. I'm going to resize the vertices to create that indent for the garage door. So that indent is only going to be 10 units in and about 20 units on each side. And then for height, I'm going to match it to the angled section next to it. Now let's quickly block in the garage door holder. This is the part where the garage door shutter would roll up and be stored when it's opened. So I'm just going to use an existing BSP additive brush, duplicate it and resize it to be positioned right above the garage door indent. Right about there and I think this size is pretty good. Now there is a bit of a problem that you may begin to experience with pivot points of BSP brushes. When you use geometry editing mode and you modify vertices, faces and edges and resize the BSP brush, the pivot point stays at its original position. So once you resize the brush, sometimes you want to reposition the pivot point and control where that pivot point is saved on the modified brush. Let me quickly show you how to do this so it becomes easier to work with BSP brushes. So select the BSP brush that you want to modify the pivot point on. Go into orthographic viewport and right click on any of the vertices of the brush. The pivot point will snap there. Next, anywhere in the viewport, right click, go to pivot and choose set as pivot offset. The pivot point will now be saved on our brush. I do have a hotkey set up, Control P, to set as pivot offset. So I don't have to right click and choose that from the pivot, set pivot offset every time. I'm going to show you how to do this in just a minute. But first let's go ahead and position the garage door holder a little closer. And now we have this blocked in. Let's do a quick in-game test. Spawn inside the map, right click on the viewport, play from here and take a look from point of view of the player. I like how this looks. So let me show you how to set up that hotkey to modify the pivot point on brushes to save without having to go to the menu. Go to Edit, Edit the Preferences, select Keyboard Shortcuts, and in the search bar type in Set as Pivot Offset. It will pop up and just press Ctrl P to set the hotkey or any other key you want to use that on. So from here on, I'll be using Control P to save the pivot points on all BSP brushes. Now let's focus on blocking in windows. We already established our window size for single windows. Width is going to be 100 and height at 140. And for double windows, width is 200 and height 140. If you're working on a different building or you want different size windows, then go ahead and use different dimensions and just kind of play around and see which window sizes look best for your architecture and for your environment. These are the dimensions that I chose based on the experience working on similar type of environments. Let's bring in a new BSP brush. So instead of duplicating the existing brush, trying to resize that to a specific size, it's easier to drag a new one and go in the details panel and set the size you want. So I'm going to use a box and right away we need brush type to be subtractive. This will carve out our windows. Let's set depth to 10 and in my scene it's on X. Set width to 100 which is on Y and height to 140 which is on Z. Let's go ahead and move the window up and position it. Your depth and your width might be different so you might have to switch X and Y values depending on the orientation of your scene and the BSP brush. Let's snap the pivot point to the vertex of the brush so it's easier to work with. And now position it into the wall and find the right spot. I think when it comes to a wall that's 300 units and for residential type of building like we're building and taking into consideration the height of the window, we're going to position the window about 80 units from the top 
and about a hundred units from the bottom. Again, this is more of an art where you have to take a look from the player's point of view as well as maybe dragging the mannequin right up to the window and placing him as if he would be standing on second floor looking out the window. So we just have to find that right spot by adjusting the window, moving it and comparing it to the mannequin. So I had originally positioned the window 90 units from the top and 90 units from the bottom and I decided to move it 10 units higher so now it makes it 80 units from the top and 100 units from the bottom. Just a slight change but to me it just looks better. We only need to establish this position of the window once because it will be duplicated all around the building. So here I'm taking the single window and I'm going to duplicate it and move it to the side. Since on the side of the window we have single windows and on the front of the building we have double windows. Let's come back to the front and resize it to be 200 units in width to make up the double window. Select brush, go into details panel and change Y, the width, to 200 units. When we do that it messes up the brush positioning. So we just need to modify the pivot point, save the pivot point and move the brush back. And I think the positioning of this window is good. Let's take a little side tour and focus on the roof indent, which is just a little border around the roof for extra detail. So I'm going to take three additive brushes from the second floor and duplicate them for the top. I'm gonna move them up and modify the vertices, moving them down. So the height of this border is 20 units. Let's change the brush type to subtractive and move all the vertices of these brushes in 20 units to subtract the inner space creating the border. Let's go all around and modify the vertices of each brush. And here's our secondary shape block and for the roof. Let's get back to the windows. We're going to focus on these two windows here and both of them are double windows. All we need to do is just grab our existing subtractive window brush and just duplicate it. If it gets a little difficult to see what's going on because of the grid texture, you can switch to Alt-5 detail lighting mode or Alt-6 for lighting only mode. This often helps. Press Alt-4 to get back to lit mode. Now let's block in the third window. I'm going to use existing window brush, duplicate that and move it for the angled building corner. We need to rotate this into position and for more precise rotation we need to disable rotation snaps. So in the viewport toolbar, temporarily disable rotation snaps so we can rotate it freely and place it into position. We don't have to be very exact with this, but we just want to keep everything consistent. Let's position this brush better. I'm going to disable grid snaps and change the transformation gizmo from world to local. This will allow me to move the brush along the local coordinate system instead of the world. Now let's go ahead and position the brush better. Move it over and I think this looks pretty good. Let's set it back to world coordinate system. Re-enable grid and rotation snaps. You only want to use local coordinate system on a case by case basis. And same goes for disabling grid and rotation snapping. It should be done just on a few brushes or objects where you need more precise placement. Let's play test and game. Run around, take a look, and I think the front windows look good. Now let's focus on the side of the building. Let's take a look at our concept art to see what we're aiming for, this section right here. We already have one single window positioned, so let's grab this brush, duplicate it over for the second window, and let's duplicate it again. And this is going to be our smaller window. The height of the smaller window is going to be half the size of our regular window. So let's go into details panel and change the height to 70. This resets the pivot point and moves our brush. This happens because we modified the pivot point and then we try to change the brush shape in the details panel by modifying the values. And Unreal doesn't like that. So what we need to do to fix this is reset the pivot point back to a vertex and move the BSP brush so it carves out our window. Make sure to align the smaller window so the top is in the exact same spot as the rest of the windows on the building. Now we need a double window. Instead of trying to duplicate the single window and then resizing it, let's go to the front, grab 
the double window and then duplicate it, rotate it and place it into position. And remember, if it gets too distracting to see with the grid on your BSP brushes, just switch over to Detail Lighting, Alt 5, or Lighting Only, Alt 6, to see your geometry better. So I think this looks pretty good. Let's move this window just slightly closer to the corner and continue with window blocking. We need to duplicate the single window and position it for the back of the building. The back of the building only has single windows and we're going to need three of them. Let's take a quick look at our concept art to note the positioning. And now with this window placed, let's go ahead and duplicate it for the other two windows. Now all we have left are four windows, three small and one single. So I'm going to duplicate this single window, rotate it and position it. And then for the small windows, I'm going to come over to this side, grab the one we already created, duplicate it and move it to the other side. Now we just need to duplicate and then find the best placement for all these windows based on reference and what looks good design wise. So I'm just going to move these around and visually decide on what looks best. And I think this looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and play test and game. Let's take a look at our positioning and placement of the windows and just overall scale. The reason we're doing so much playtesting and making sure that everything is to the right size is once we get this down right, we're not going to be doing much playtesting later other than to test our modeling and texturing and materials. But we need to make sure that we get our proportions correct because everything is going to be built on these dimensions. I also noticed that our stairs are a bit off the floor. So we need to fix that. Let's go ahead and come in. We need to lower our grid to 5 and move both set of stairs down to the ground plane. Now let's continue with doors. Let's go to the back and we're going to duplicate the mannequin and move it a little closer where the doors are going to go. Let's drag a new BSP brush box, set it to brush type subtractive. We need depth to be 10, width at 120 and height at 220. Let's right click on the vertex to snap the pivot point. Press Ctrl P to save that pivot point and position the brush into place. I'm going to move it down and align with the second floor. Let's move it over to the left. And we're going to have two doors here. So let's duplicate it and move it over to the right for the second door. Now let's adjust the windows a bit to see what visually looks good. So I'm going to readjust these windows a bit. And I like how this looks. Now let's create an awning that goes above the two doors. I'm going to switch to lighting only mode, Alt 6, to see the geometry better. For this we're going to take an existing additive brush, duplicate it, and then resize it manually by moving the vertices and adjusting it to create the awning. We don't need specific dimensions for this, other than to modify the brush so it looks visually appealing and positioned above the doors. I also grab the two front vertices and drag them down to create the angle. So it looks more like an awning. I think this is good enough. Let's quickly jump in game and take a look. I'm going to walk underneath it next to the doors and take a look at the door and the awning together and uh, see the height of the player compared to both of these shapes. And I'm going to slowly modify, just move it down so the bottom is aligned with the top of the door. Now I want to slightly readjust some of the windows on the side of the building. I'm just going to grab a couple of these windows and just move them over a little bit closer to the edge, to the corner of the building. Since we had a bit of time away from working on the windows, I'm going to fly around and see if everything still looks good visually to me. And it does. I'm happy with the window positioning. So let's come back to the awning and create the subtractive space underneath it. Let's duplicate the existing additive brush, change it to subtractive, and modify the vertices to subtract the space from the additive brush. So I'm going to select these vertices, move them over 10 units on all sides, so we successfully can subtract that space. This will just help us judge better the proportion and the scale of the awning, compared how it's positioned on the wall and next to the doors. Let's do a quick play test. And I think this looks pretty good. 
Our next and final secondary shape blocking is AC units. Let's go to the front of the building and duplicate an additive brush. Let's use this garage door holder. We need to modify the brush pivot point so it's easier to work with. Right click on the vertex, snap it, and then control P to save it. Then duplicate the brush, move it up, shift 5 to geometry editing mode, and begin resizing faces and vertices to estimate the size shape of the AC unit. So I think 80 units in width may be the right size. So I'm just going to pull these vertices back a little bit, create more of the right shape. And I think this is okay. Let's keep this size for now and duplicate it for the rest of the windows. So I'm just going to grab this, Alt, Shift, Drag, duplicate this AC unit for the second window. Then let's duplicate it one more time for the side of the building and position it in this window. And before we move further, let me play test really quick to help us judge the size better. And I'm hesitating a little bit on the AC unit size. It just seems a bit off. So I'm not quite sure that there's something off about it. So I, I am going to keep this for now, uh, but I do think that we may need to readjust it and make it smaller. In the meantime, let's continue to block in the AC unit with the size as is, and I will make that decision once we have them all positioned. So let's come up front, and I'm going to duplicate this AC unit, move it over to the corner side of the building. Let's disable grid and rotation snaps so we can place it and position it better. And make sure to re-enable grid and rotation snapping back. And let's duplicate it one more time for the back of the building and position it by this window above the stairs. One more playtest and let's go ahead and run around and see what all the AC unit sizes look like. And yeah, I think they are too big and they, they just seem off. We are going to change them and make them slightly smaller. Again, we can change them inside Maya when we begin modeling. But I do want to have the right shape relative to the building as a template when we export these BSP brushes. And I don't want to have the size as a template to start with. So I do like to have everything to right scale and size prior to exporting to make sure that our template is exactly what we want. So let's take this AC unit and duplicate it for this window because I want this window to have the AC unit as well. And then we're going to use this brush and resize it for the correct AC unit size. So let's go into geometry editing mode and push the faces on each side 10 units in. And then go into top view so we can use our middle mouse click and drag measuring tool. And we want the depth to be at 40, width at 60, and height at 40. So let's go to front view or side view and resize so the height is at 40 units. Let's go back to perspective view and it already looks better. Let's switch to lighting only mode so we can see geometry more clearer. And the size of this AC unit is way better and it looks proportionally correct to the window and the building. Let's move this AC unit down so it's a little closer to the bottom of the window. And we're going to need to duplicate it for all the rest of the windows replacing the existing AC unit. So let's go into orthographic viewport and make sure that, that our pivot point on the BSP brush is at a vertex. So it's easy to duplicate and manipulate this brush all around the building. We're going to delete the old AC unit here and duplicate the new one. Now let's do this for all of the other AC units around the building. I'm going to duplicate, delete the old brush and replace it with a new brush. So let's do this quickly for all of the old BSP AC units. Remember to disable grid and rotation snaps when you're working with position and the BSP brush for the corner angled section of the building, as well as changing it to local coordinate space. All right, and here we are. Let's go ahead, fly around our building, take a look at all the AC units, make sure we change them all out, and do our final in-game test. So let's spawn a game and run around to do our final check. 
make sure that all the scale and proportion feels right. And to me, everything feels good. I like where everything is at, and we are now done with PSP blocking. This is going to become our modeling template. So we'll be taking all these BSP brushes, exporting them out, and importing them into Maya to be used as a template to model to. Our very last thing is to make sure that we save our progress. Go to File, and Save All. 